Get up. <laughs> what are you doing, baby? Shuttle mix. Good ones this morning. I went to bed at um, let's see, almost ten, but then I got up at six. I mean, I woke up at six, and I'm like, I'm not getting up this early, you know. So then I finally went back to sleep, but probably took me thirty or forty minutes, and then I slept till eight thirty, and then I got another experience. But the first one, which would have been way before six a.m. The second one would have been after 6.30 a.m. But the first one, um, this isn't the first time Joel's put many, many apartments in a mall where I'm like staying in a, or, or they're my old apartments in a mall. Or I'm, you know, actually living there or I used to live there or whatever. Oh man, I'm hot. But I gotta shave my legs, so I can't show my legs. <laughs> but we'll shave my legs tomorrow, won't we, Hannah? We'll take our yearly, yearly bath tomorrow, won't we? But um, um, let's see. I turned the air conditioner down to seventy six, so it'll run till seventy five, and then I'm under the fan, so it should get pretty cool in a minute. I had it on 77 earlier. That's a little warm. But, um, so, yeah, so the first experience, oh my God, I was walking around this mall forever. It was my whole family, me, my dad, my mom, my sister, and my brother. Um, there could have been a couple other people, my grandma maybe, but I specifically remember us five. And like I say, there could have been a couple more family members. I see me, my sister, my brother, my mom, my dad. And we're walking around this mall. And I had a couple of apartments that I used to live in, in that mall. Um, and and um, at first, they both were like just a few yards apart. And then... Later in the scenario, it's like one of the apartments was way, way, way far down to the other side of the mall, which took forever to walk to. And yeah, so we were just walking around, walking around, walking around. And at one point, um, you know, you know, my parents were saying, OK, let's go to dinner soon. And I was like, well, I'm going to go change my shorts. And I was trying to find a necklace to put on and blah, 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 blah. So that's when I start going about the mall by myself and I start going back to those two apartments that I used to live at. But it's like they were still mine, except I just haven't lived there in a long, 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 long time. And I still had just a little bit of shit like in the closet, right? When you go into the apartment to the right, there was a closet. Except in the scenario, it was a lot bigger than real life. Joel was trying to copy off that apartment I used to live at in, in uh, Kansas City. And... Yeah, right when you go into, it was considered a luxury apartment, but right when you went into the door, there was a coat closet to the right. But in the scenario, it was a lot bigger and deeper. And I was looking in, um, the first apartment I went in, one of my old apartments, I thought, wow, I left all this crap, you know, in there, just mainly in the closet. Um, there may have been a few things in the apartment, but not much. It mainly was just a bunch of crap in the, in the closet. And I looked um, in the closet, there was two or three battery chargers and um 
there was a couple other things too, but there was like, I specifically remember seeing the battery chargers and just a whole bunch of other stuff. And um, right now I can't remember the other stuff, but I don't remember seeing any coats or anything. It was just a bunch of crap, like two to three old battery chargers. And like I say, there was five or six other things I honed in on, but I can't remember. And, you know, like I do have like an old battery charger, like in my drawer and underneath the cabinet. So that's where he got that from. And in real life, I did used to put my totes and stuff full of crap in the laundry room. You know, it was a bunch of crap in it because I didn't have a washer or dryer. So I used the laundry room as storage or whatever. But in the scenario, he just put a bunch of junk in that first closet when you go in the door. So I was walking around, walking around. Um, and uh, I finally went into my second apartment, but I had to walk really, 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 really far. And it seemed like hours and hours and hours went by. And I was thinking, oh my God, my parents are going to go to dinner without me. I kept thinking they were going to abandon me and go to dinner without me. And I, I finally walked all the way to the end of the mall, which took forever and ever and ever and ever. And um, they were having, it was so funny. I was looking at some tables and there was, I honed in on some, cho a big old, a big old, uh, cake chocolate cake and there's all these tables full of cake and but like i said i like chocolate cake so i, I honed in on the uh chocolate cake and i was like wow they're having a cake festival they were having a little cake festival at the end of the mall but it took forever to get there because uh, you know i walked a long time to get there and then i turned back around and then eventually i came back to the other part of the the other side of the mall and then i went to the that other apartment that I had, I only had two apartments, but like I say, at first they were like a few yards apart. And then all of a sudden one of them was like much farther away, but I did finally go into both apartments in the second apartment. This scenario was a long, 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 long time. This, and like I said, I was walking around, um, trying to find my a pair of shorts to put on a different pair of shorts. Just like this pair right here, Joel was copied. I was trying to find a pair of shorts like this. And uh, and then I was trying to find uh, the proper t-shirt. And then I was trying to find my necklace. And and, and I, I couldn't find my necklace in the second apartment. Um, let's see, I finally found the pair of shorts. And, and then I put on a different t-shirt. And I was trying to find my necklace. And it seemed like I couldn't find my necklace. And this went on for hours and hours and hours. And I just kept thinking, man, my stepdad, my mom, and everybody, they're going to leave without me and go to dinner without me. And um, and I'm forgetting, uh, I'm going to forget a little bit because this went on for a long, 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 long time. And uh, for many, many hours. And like I said, I went out on my own for many hours. Um, observing both of my apartments that, that I used to live in, but they were still mine and I still left shit in there and um like i said i know i'm forgetting a little bit because this was so damn long but i'm gonna try to remember if i um remember anything else but yeah i do remember all the cake and everything and that was cool there were different colors of cake it was different kinds of cake but i honed in on the chocolate because it kind of reminded me of the mayonnaise chocolate cake my mom used to make instead of using like eggs and stuff you use mayonnaise and it was really, really good. You couldn't really taste the mayonnaise. Uh, well, maybe a little bit you could, but it was really, really good. And see, now you could really still make that cake, you know, with uh, um, almond flour. Well, they have, um, you know, grain substitute flours, but I just haven't tried them yet. I kind of want to try some of the pancake batter and then I want to buy my own cinnamon sticks because I don't think I'm allergic to cinnamon and then I could just put some cinnamon on the pancakes and just just eat them like that um I, I'm I I had a reaction to maple syrup I mean maple yeah yeah maple syrup a few years ago so I don't I definitely don't want to be eating no ma maple syrup but I'd be happy with just a little pancake with cinnamon on top but I, ha I just haven't tried it yet. Um, the pancake batters, which is like almond flour and a few other arrowroot arrow flour or whatever. Maybe cassava flour. I just haven't tried them yet, but I do want to try them. Um, 
so yeah so um but anyway um these were like just regular wheat wheat cakes Joel, Joel didn't program it for me to think that they were almond cakes or anything like that. They were pure gluten cakes. But anyway, I honed in on the chocolate because Joel knows I used to eat chocolate cake. My mom used to make that mayonnaise chocolate cake a lot. And my grandma did too. But anyway, so, um, yeah, and, and like I say, it was uh, just a whole lot of me walking back and forth, going into both of those apartments. And I remember... Um, like hooking up with my mom, dad, sister, and brother. I remember having conversations and stuff. And I mean, I remember being with them quite a while. You know, I just can't remember exactly what we we were talking about and stuff like that. But I mean, it, it, it was fun. And I have experiences like this all the time. You know, where I'm trying to find this, find that. And I'm, tr I'm supposed to go to dinner and I never do or whatever. But, um... But it was it was fun, but it was long. And like I say, Joel has put gave me many 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 experiences where the motel is right there inside of a mall. And uh, so anyway, okay, so so then I freaking woke up at like six a.m. and I already got eight hours of sleep. But I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna fucking get up at six a.m. on my day off or whatever. So. I didn't know if I was going to be able to go back to sleep, but I finally did probably about 6.40 or 6.30. And then I had another experience and then I didn't get up till about 8, 8.20 or 8.30. And um, a stupid clock was flashing, my alarm clock, so I thought maybe the utilities went out. But, well, the aliens could have actually tampered with it, but, it, but it's kind of, I mean, they still could have tampered with it and made it start flashing. Cause I thought that was a little bit odd, but it's kind of, it was a return item. That clock was a return item and it's kind of, um, it's flubbed up. You know what I mean? It was flubbed up when I bought it, but still the aliens could have done something to make it flash like that. Cause it was flashing at 12 and the, the, uh, uh the utilities did not go out and, um, it was plugged in real tight and everything. But like I say, there's it probably didn't take much for for an eight, for Joel or whoever to tamper with it to make it flash like that. It wouldn't take much because it was it's already it had fouled up before. Um. Well, I've forgotten what way, but it's it's that's why they returned it. Oh yeah, and also I think why they returned it was because the alarm, the noise is very faint, and so I think that's why they returned it. But yeah, it's a little bit screwed up. Um, but like I said, I, well, I can't really remember if I've seen it flashing before. But I know it's it's a little bit flubbed up, I think. But anyway, so I, I thought that was kind of odd that it was flashing at noon. Because I was trying to figure out what the hell time it was. And I didn't want to get out of bed, you know. And I, fig I figured it probably was 8 or 8.30. And then I finally got out of bed and noticed it was 8.30. Um... But yeah, nothing else was flashing. Nothing, the utilities did not go out. But so, um, okay, so then when I w fell back to sleep, probably at about 6.30 or 6.45, um, I had this other weird experience. And it, it, it was cool, though. I mean, it was fun. And it lasted a long, 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 long time, too. And I was in this, like, strange house. But it's like, okay, it's like, I was in this strange house. And it's like, um, um, I have this one coworker walking around in there. I mean, it's, there was some, there's still some like desks and stuff in there. Like as if we were sort of like, maybe it's almost like we were like working from home, except we were working in this other coworker's house or something. And it was me and this other coworker. There was some s weird sexual stuff in here too. And, um, there was some. Yeah, it was, but, um, uh, I can't remember if it was, it was some weird sexual stuff, but like I say, it's kind of, um, I just remember it had something to do with, um, my coworker. And then there was some, a couple of weird little objects and like round tan object flat and see, and that's all I can remember, but I know there was some sexual stuff. And it had something to do with her. 
And like, like I say, and we were kind of like in the, like in a little office in the middle of the house. And I have no idea who that coworker was. It was just me and her like walking around forever and ever and ever and ever. And it's like, we were sort of like in a work environment, except like we were working, it's like we were working at her, this strange coworker's house, but she wasn't even working though. Um, so anyway, um, I had a lot of conversation with, oh yeah. Um, I remember uh, my coworker asking me like where the stapler was and stuff like that. And then she eventually kind of this, we were kind of in the middle of the house right then. And that's where the, the sexual stuff that I can't remember very well. That's where the sexual stuff was. And that's where, uh, um, there was like, you know, some desks and shit, like an office right there in the middle of, of the living room or whatever, in the middle of the house. Okay. So she eventually disappears. And then I start walking around and observing the whole house on my own. And then all of a sudden I walk into a bedroom. I, I mean, I know I walk into the, um, I just kind of walked several feet into the bedroom and I could tell the, the person's house that we were in, she was in bed, just chilling out, watching TV, but I did not go in far enough to see what she looked like, but it's like she wasn't working. It's like she was off work. And, um, I don't know what time of day this was supposed to be. I, I want to say it was just a normal, uh, either morning or afternoon. And like I say, she was in her bed just watching TV because I could vaguely see the bed and I knew she was in there and I saw the lights on, but I did not go in there far enough to see her laying in the bed, but I knew it was a woman and that's the house we were in, but it's like she was off work and not really working. And then all of a sudden two little kittens were roaming around these two little tiny kittens. I mean, they were probably like four or five weeks old and, um, shit, I can't even remember the color of them at the moment, but I think one of them was gray. The other one, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, one of them I know was gray. The other two, I can't remember the two smallest ones. At first I saw the two, four or five week old kittens and they were just roaming around. And I remember thinking, wow, these kittens are just roaming around by themselves, you know, because the, you know, the coworker was just, you know, sitting in bed, chilling out. She wasn't, well, well at that time it seemed like I was in the whole house by myself. Because I just kept thinking, but the house was pretty big. I just kept thinking, you know, these poor little kittens, how long did they have to roam around by themselves, you know, before the coworker, you know, attends to them or whatever. But they seemed like they were, you know, independent and didn't really need anybody. So then um, it's kind of like I must have walked around the corner. There must have been a little bath. There was like a little bathroom right there. But, well, it was just like a little cat bathroom. But anyway... Um, before I walked, um, or in the little area, like before, um, the edge of the bedroom where I peeked around the corner and I saw, I, I knew the coworker was laying there in bed, but like I say, I didn't really s see her, but I knew she was there in the bed watching TV and the lights were on and everything. Um, but like I say, when I saw the kittens roaming around, all of a sudden it seemed like they were in there by themselves, but really they weren't because she was, she just wasn't paying attention to them at the moment. And I looked down and there was like a little toilet, like a little baby infant toilet or whatever. And one of the cats, one of the kittens jumped up there and I was like, wow, she trained these kittens to go on the toilet, but it wasn't a normal toilet. It was like a little infant, but it was even smaller than a little, or a little, uh, toilet for like a little kid. It was smaller than that. It was big enough for a cat, for a little kitten or a cat. And one of the gray kitties, uh, one of the gray kittens uh, jumped up there. And um, I didn't actually see it go pee pee, but it jumped up there. And I couldn't believe that she had trained her kittens to go on the toilet. Okay, so there was, one of them was gray and the other one, I can't remember. It could have been orange. But then there was kind of a larger gray cat. Well, it wasn't a cat, it was a kitten. Another larger gray cat that came into the scene and I was like wow that's an odd looking kitten it kind of well I know what Joel was trying to copy off of I had shaved Simba's face real good and uh the size of his face and everything so it made his face look really made his head look really round 
But when I first saw the third kitten, it reminded me of some other animal, like a bear or something. And I can't remember what animal it reminded me of. But it was odd looking. And I know Joe, that's what Joe was trying to copy off of because Simba looks real funny right now because I shaved all the hair off of his face. And he's got this odd looking round head. And so I know Joe was trying to copy off, you know, that third cat that came into the scene, the third kitten. And that one was a lot larger than the other two tiny little kittens. And like I said, I think two of them, um, one of them was gray and this one was a little, I don't know, a little darker gray maybe. The other one, I can't remember what color it was. I want to say maybe it was orange. But there was three kittens. And like I say, the one that came into the scene the third time around was a lot bigger and very, very, very odd looking. Because when I first looked at it, I was like, I can't remember what it was. I was like, that looks like a bear or something. It was some other animal. Okay, so, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then, and like I say, there were some other parts um, where I was walking around, you know, the, where the little office was in the middle of the house, rearranging stuff, you know, like uh, supplies and stuff like that. I was doing that for a little while. But then, um, okay, so after um, I saw one of the kittens get up on the tiny little toilet, all of a sudden I look down there and I see a bowl of like what some Chinese person or some Asian person would make a bowl of soup. And it was just like in a white, you know, normal sized bowl. And, um, and there was just soup laying there and it was just in pure water. And it had like, like slices of carrots floating around slices of strawberries and there was at least six or seven other fruits and vegetables floating around in this soup well that's the only way I know what to call it is a, is a soup and I looked down at it and I was like the cats are gonna eat that you know I was thinking the kittens are gonna eat that so I was just kind of baffled because I thought that was food that the kittens were supposed to eat but you know I wasn't sure but that was kind of weird and odd, you know, because a cat wouldn't really, a kitten or a cat wouldn't really eat that. But yeah, that was very odd. But anyway, so those were the two experiences I had this morning. And they both were just long, 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 long. But like I say, I spent a long time, that first experience in that second apartment, looking for the pair of shorts, looking for the t-shirt. Looking for my, oh yeah, and I was also looking for a pair of sunglasses, which I think I did find the sunglasses. But the necklace I never could find, and I, I was walking around forever trying to find my necklace. And um, that was in that first experience in the mall. But, um, okay, so then I had this other experience, which was um, yesterday morning. Those other two experiences I had this morning, and the other experience I had yesterday morning and, wow, believe it or not, I still remember it very clearly. Um, anyway, I got to drink some water. I'm thirsty. Okay, break time. Break time. Man, that's good, Hannah. It's like weird when I have experiences where um, they piss me off. I don't really want to talk about them. Like this experience pissed me off. Okay, and this is not the first experience where... Joel has put me downtown, downtown in this town, on this, the same street, except, except it was nothing, it's nothing like in real life. In the scenario, like I say, it feels like a whole nother dimension. Just, you know, downtown in a whole nother dimension instead of 3D. And he has put me on that street many times. And uh, he never told me what the street is called, but it's very familiar to me because I've been on that street many times in other scenarios. Okay, and like I said, it feels like a different dimension and everything. Man, I've had so many millions of other experiences that I've never talked about. 
that I can still kind of remember bits and pieces. I mean, like one time, well, oh, fuck, that was fucking 20 years ago or longer, probably. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what town I was in, because I think I was in, I was supposed to be in Dallas or something. And I mean, it was just crazy. And I was walking around downtown. And as far as I remember, it was me and my friend, Angie. And I mean, it's just like another fucking dimension. Feels nothing like 3D. And we were walking around, going to shops. And going to all these little fairs and circuses that were just right there. Just everywhere. In in the middle of downtown. Just everywhere, 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 everywhere. And I mean, it was just like nothing like in 3D, man. It feels like such a blast. But that was like fucking 20 years ago. But all these experiences and all these other experiences are just bam, bam, bam. Like little bits and pieces coming back to me. Like where I'm in these strange neighborhoods. Um, or actually, where, where Joel actually put me in that neighborhood of, up there. Um, but like I say, it was so different in the scenario because it feels like a different dimension. And I was, I, I can't, um, there was two houses that I went into on that road, Oak Street or whatever where the nice houses are. But in the scenario, it was just felt, it was just totally like, it's so different, like a totally different dimension. And I went, and I remember my brother being in it. And then, but for some reason, I went into two different houses. And that's all I can remember. And that was probably 20 years ago too. But I don't know why when I talk about these experiences, I have all these other ones coming back to me, like bam, 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 bam. But, um, okay, so, okay, so, but yeah, this experience like pissed me off so bad. Um, so, um, basically, and, 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 and if you recall, this isn't the first time Joel has put, and I've met him several times, and him, uh, well, they found Diego in their backyard, and they said their fence is really enclosed in and everything. They don't know how the hell Diego got into their yard. And this turtle, I mean, looks like it's never really been in the wild. Um, So where he came from is a mystery. So they brought it to work and gave me Diego. He's a real colorful, pretty turtle. Uh, Elizabeth gave me Diego, her and the wife and the two little kids, the two little twins. Um, but, um, But yeah, the aliens are actually um, programming people to give me turtles. That's obvious. But they know I have enough now, so they haven't given me any this season. They know, they know I don't want any more. But, um, and I can't believe I've had Diego that long. Cause I, uh, cause I want to say, maybe, I don't, I don't think my boss was still alive then. I, I, I think it was after 2016, but I'd have to go look at the videos, but, um, so basically the husband, um, basically that one experience where I wanted to kill the husband because he killed one of my turtles, that experience. So in this, in this, in this scenario, he, um, was uh, just, he was a, an acquaintance, a friend in the scenario. And he took me, he wanted to take me to, or wanted to meet wanted me to meet him at this place kind of called Snow Bluff, except it was indoors. And it was right there on that downtown street, like I say, that Joel has put me in many, many, many times before and other scenarios. And um, so me and him walked into this uh, this little, uh, 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 what do you call it, fun resort type of thing a fun thing that you do, you know, you go inside, there's over to the left, there was snowboards, um, odd looking snowboards, skis, odd looking skis, and these other odd little freaking ass gadgets, which made no sense, that were as big as, like a, bigger than, uh, almost as big as like what a twin bed, two by four would be, like little, it was like a little thing that you're, you were supposed to get on, And slide down the little snow bluff. Which that made no sense. That thing was way too big. It was like this big piece of. 
plastic thing and you like there was like a little seat in the middle and I never did want to pick that because I'm like this isn't, isn't enough room you know it's just a small little hill it was just a small little incline small little hill inside this little building what I was waiting on was um the snowboards and people kept hogging the snowboards and shit and wouldn't ever bring them back for other people to use this was all on the left side of the building when you when you went right inside the building okay so anyway but that gadget it was like just this big plastic it was about as big piece of plastic or fiberglass or whatever as big as um like a twin bed or whatever um, except, it, you know, it was, you got on it and you like slid down the, the snow, the snow bluff. Um, but anyway, I did have that facility on the brain for whatever reason. Uh, before this experience, it used to be off of Highway 65. And I think it was called Snow Bluff. And I think that it opened after I graduated high school, but I never did go to it. But, um, but, uh. So, Joel was trying to copy off of that. So, in the scenario, he puts me downtown on the street. And so, me and the, co I mean, me and the acquaintance, which is my coworker's husband, it's like we were just friends and he wanted me to go there. And, but for some reason, I was so mad at him. I got so mad at him because, um, I mean, I don't know why, why would I blame him? trying to remember because oh because he kept hogging the skis and the snowboards and stuff and he would never bring them back for other people to use so I never did get a slide down the little snow bluff okay this was a very small building it made no sense whatsoever and the incline wasn't even very big the incline wasn't uh, very big and over to the left, you just, you just rent it. I mean, yeah, you rent it out. You, you got whatever skis you wanted, regular skis or these really odd looking skis, which I, which were very, very long. And I know Joe was copying off a long time ago. I was looking at these weird, uh, roller things where you, where you, uh, skate on grass, you skate on grass. And that's what Joe was trying to copy off of because they look like, uh, that. And, uh, but except they were extra, extra, extra long. And I was like, I don't want those. And I don't want that big ass cream colored looking, you know, plastic or fiberglass, uh, sled or whatever the hell it was. It was sitting over there and the odd snowboards that were broken that didn't even have boots. And I was like, I don't want those. I, I want regular, a regular snowboard or, you know, or regular skis. But he kept hogging the skis and other people, other patrons or whatever, kept hogging everything. And they wouldn't bring the good stuff back. All that shit was broken and stuff. And so it's like I was so mad because I just like waited there forever and ever and ever. Trying to rent out the proper, or trying to go grab the proper snowboards with boots that weren't broken and blah, 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 blah. Now, there was a couple times I just actually slid down on my knees and my butt. But I was like, well, this isn't fun. I want, you know, I did that a couple times. But I was like, this isn't fun. I want, you know, regular snowboards and shit like that. But um, like I say, the co-worker, I mean, the acquaintance, the co-workers, she wasn't in the scenario, but her husband, it was just a husband. He never would bring them back. You know, he would never walk up, you know, back up the incline and set them over there for me and other patrons to use. Okay. And this is kind of weird because I know we went in there kind of early, like afternoon. And then it started getting dark. It even started get, to get dark in the facility. And I'm like, I don't want to wait here all damn day and night trying to, you know, get the proper snowboards and the proper skis. And it was already getting dark. And at one point, yeah, it, it, I want to say that, yeah, as far as I remember, it was already getting to be about midnight. And I was just waiting around forever and ever. And I was so pissed at my friend, a.k.a. acquaintance, my co-worker's husband. And then all of a sudden, it was about midnight and I walked outside and my sister came walking up. And I told her, I was like, come here, you know, come inside. 
and um, you know, we'll try to go skiing or whatever. And uh, and I was telling her, I was like, I've been here for hours and hours and hours and hours, and I still haven't been able to get any skis or snowboards that weren't broken or whatever. And uh, but but yeah, it, it was it was. <laughs> But when I woke up, it, I was just so pissed off. And I and it's like, um, I didn't really want to talk about the experience because it was an experience that pissed me off. But, um, but yeah, it, it was like so bizarre. Yeah, because when we went in there, it was probably, uh, oh man, I want to say maybe three, four, five o'clock. And then, like I say, it started to get dark outside in the facility, and it was midnight that I had been there, still waiting to get a decent pair of snowboards and or skis. I really wanted to get the snowboards, and some of these snowboards were kind of small, because in real life, they're normally bigger than that. But, yeah, like, there was, like, this gadget that looked like this, and it was as big as a freaking double bed and it had like like a hole there and it had like some straps and stuff like I'm so sure you're gonna sit in there and in that big old thing and have fun going down this small little incline of snow but it was just so bizarre because <laughs> there's no way you could have fun I mean because it was so little it was just a tiny little incline I mean, you can't have fun just going down. But I know, you know, Joe probably copied off of at home when we used to go down that tiny little hill. But when you're little, it was fun, you know. And this building was like so small. I mean, it was the smallest, tiniest little incline. I mean, it was just, I don't know, like 20, what's, I don't know, like maybe 40, maybe not even 40 yards but it was a tiny little incline and everything. But yeah, so it's just this big old piece of plastic uh, sled looking thing. And you just sort of sat in the middle with straps. And yeah, and I was just like, I don't want that. I was waiting on the decent pair of skis and or I was actually waiting on a decent pair of or a decent snowboard, you know, that was just normal looking snowboard with boots and uh like they all like like did, they didn't even have boots they were like all broken and shit and um and then like i say there was this other uh weird looking skis that were super long and it had nothing but like wheels 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 which that kind of made no sense because you're not going to use that on snow but i was like well i don't want those either i had nothing but wheels and, uh, and like I say, Joel was copying off. They do have some roller skates like that, that you go down hills and shit on grass and stuff. Cause I was looking at them many years ago, but, um, yeah. And so that's what Joel was trying to copy off of. But anyway, it was, it was bizarre. It was, but I, I just, it had been a long, long, long time since he's put, put me on that street, that same street in downtown. It's been a long time where he's given me a scenario with that exact street. And uh, those other experiences are trying to come back to me. And I, I, I can't um, remember. They're trying to come back to me. Some of those other ones on that exact same street many, many, many years ago. But yeah, so they, all these experiences were kind of fun, but I've had better. I mean, they all were still C plus experiences, but they're still fun. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Yeah, so those those weird gadgets. But like I say, I was just waiting on a decent snowboard, and he, they they would never bring them back. You know, it's like they just kept leaving all the bad, broken crap. You know, and they they were just, they were you walked into the place. And over to the left against the wall, that's where all the snowboards and skis and all the little sleds and everything were at. But anyway, it, it was a weird experience. Well, thanks for listening.